Hi guys, welcome back to Dat. In this video, we are taking a look at the Emacs Tiny Hawk 2 race, and we're going to be going over the specifications, what it can do. We're going to be looking at the whole binding procedure and some first flights, so stay there. So here she is guys, this is the Tiny Hawk 2 race. Uh, it has been out for a little bit, but I've got on hold of one and I've, I've always wanted to have a look at this and see what it's like so I can compare it to the other Tiny Hawks that they do as well. And it gives me a perfect opportunity to also look at the jumper remote. So we're gonna be flying this with the actual remote from jumper. So looking forward to getting stuck into that one. Um, but let's get straight into this, let's open her up, see what we get. And as normal from Emacs, they do these lovely little packets or packages and you get your spare props and you get some stickers and probably a QR code with manuals and stuff like that. You get your little screwdriver, you get a spare adapter cable it looks like and all these little screws and bolts to actually put the props on, which we will be doing shortly. Two batteries, because this is a, a Tiny Hawk 2, it actually flies with two of them, two at once. So those will be stuck in. They chuck in a nice little charger board, USB, so you can actually stick six in there. So that's quite nice. And here she is. Here is the actual race, the Tiny Hawk 2 race. And she's she looks a little bit odd, but I've, I I quite like it. I like the way she looks. You know, it's outdoor. I've got to point out, guys, this is actually for outdoor flight. You're not supposed to fly this indoors because she is supposed to be a race. So she's hopefully going to be quite quick, but we will find out towards the end of this video. But yeah, she looks very nice. Nothing else in there, was there? No, nothing else. So yeah, she looks really nice. Adjustable camera, very useful. So if you can fly really, really fast, you can obviously do the tilt as high as you like. Very, very smart. Two batteries, they give you the battery strap underneath to put them in. So the batteries do sit like so, two of them under there. And to give you a little bit of a rundown of the specifications of this, the wheelbase, as they call it, is 90 mil, so it's a 90 mil wheelbase. The dry weight of this is 47.5, with battery, it's 73 grams. Uh, these little motors on here are, they are 7500 kVs, and you've got a four in one ESC board, and that is your flight controller as well on there. So standard stuff from Emacs, very nice. Uh, little SPI receiver here, and this is uh, the one that obviously compatible with the FR Sky and that's D8 mode as always. All these little tiny hulks are D8 mode on your controller. FR Sky D8. I'll link up the other videos that I've done as well about that there. Uh, camera, the actual camera is a Runcam Nano 2, so it should be a nice little camera. Smart audio as standard. VTX adjustable 2500 and 200. So pretty good, not too bad at all. So yeah, I'm loving the way that looks. So what we're going to do now, guys, is we're going to plug a couple of batteries in and we're going to look at actually binding this up with the jumper controller. And uh, yeah, let's do that now. Get the batteries plugged in first. Make sure you've got your props off. Get these batteries in place. And then we'll find that bind button. There you go. She's starting up. There is a little button in there, but that is not the button we're after. If you get the quad facing you, the button we actually need to bind is just here. So it's just here. If we press this once, blue light, at the moment you've got flashing lights going on in here, there's a blue light there. If you press this once, the blue light will go solid and you'll have a flashing pinky red light. There you go, one press. There, hopefully you can see that. The blue light has gone solid and you've got a flashing pinky red light. So put that down there, that's ready to bind. I'm gonna zoom in a bit and we'll start the controller up. Zoom in, put her there. Here's the controller. So I'm trying to get everything in shot. Let's power her on. I've already got a model set up on here and it's obviously set to FR Sky and D8 mode, which is the exact mode that you want to communicate with the receiver that are in the Tiny Hawks, every Tiny Hawk that is. So there it is set up. And what we have to do, hopefully you can make this out. Long press this button here. Uh, gets you into your page, and then we're going to press this button here, go over to page two, and then we're going to scroll down, keep on going, and 
until we find that bind. So press the over button, there's a little bind right there. We're gonna press this enter button here and you're gonna watch these lights start communicating. These will start flashing and changing color. So let's press this now. Hear the chirps. Watch the lights. They're flashing and changing. There you go, simple as that. Beeps will start stopped on the controller. This is flashing. As you can see, I know it bound because I saw it all communicate and this has actually stopped beeping or twerping, whatever you want to call it. But now we have another little issue. So I've, it's more than likely our stick positions are going to be in the wrong place to actually fly. So we're going to have to get this plugged into beta flight and make sure our sticks are in the correct place. I'll also link up a separate video that I did about that as well, but just watch this one because I will do it in this video. So I'm going to get the um, race connected up to beta flight and we're going to find out what's going on. I think it's pretty much it's pretty much set up, hopefully, how it should be, but we'll have a look. There's the simic out of place. USB connected in there, connect up to beta flight. We'll go straight over to the receiver tab. We'll check that all the sticks are in the correct place. And to me, it looks like they are. So throttle, roll, pitch, yaw. It's absolutely fine. I'll link up my other video if you're having problems with this, because if you've got your sticks in the wrong place, your quad actually won't arm. So do check that out if you're having arming problems. Modes, these are the switches. I'll link up another video that I've done about this of setting up switches, so that'll be linked up here as well. Do check that out. But I know on here, I'm gonna actually get rid of some of these. I'm gonna get rid of angle and horizon because I don't actually need them and I haven't set enough switches up. So they're gone. What I'm actually gonna do is just get rid of all of them and put them in the correct place that I want them. So I'm gonna add an arm. If I put that here, add an arm. This is gonna be my arm. So there you can see it flicking. That is my arm position. Move this so it highlights there. I'm now gonna untick that on beta flight so you can see the rest of the buttons. I'm going to add a beeper, add range. I want the beeper on the back one. So just flick the switch and that'll be off. So that'll be at the on position. Slide that over there. So that's off. And all I need now is flip out, flip over after crash. Add range, and I'm gonna have that on this. And it's still doing the buzzer for some reason. So I'm gonna have that as my on position. When I press save, it will stop. So I've saved, and now this is my actual buzzer. There you go. So that, if I hide the ones I'm not using, one, two, three, that's all I actually need. Disable the arm, beeper is there, that's beeper, flip over after crash is down. Might actually change that, give me a little bit more room. So yeah, let's change the flip over after crash. Flip over after crash I'm gonna have up there. And then press save again. So there, buzzers on that, that's my arm, and that's flip over after crash. I'm gonna change the buzzer as well actually. Change the buzzer position, and then save. Just so it's literally giving my fingers a bit more room to rest, because I know I'll rest like that a little bit, so that they're perfect. Absolutely perfect. Right, so that is it all set up. And just to show that, that actually works fine, I'm gonna go over to the motors, sign my life away, and then no props on. There we go, armed first time. So that's it. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna disconnect this and we're gonna get the props on quickly, have a look at it, and then we're gonna go out and do some flights. 
So all the setup and pit flow is done. She is pretty much ready to go, apart from the props. So we need to get a set of props on here and we'll do that right now. So let's have a look. Let's zoom in a little bit on this camera. Bag of props. Same process as every quad build I've done. Get the quad facing you. Every prop has an angle on it, you know, a degree angle. It's obviously you lift the air over it, which is what gives you your lift. And the angle has to go down towards the quad. So that pushes like that, and it's down towards the quad. And that is down towards the quad. So these push on, and then there's two little bolts or screws to actually get these props into place. So there. So quad towards you, angles are down towards the quad. That is it. I've obviously got to get that little of screws in place, but I'm not going to bore you with that. And there she is, ready to go. So I think she looks nice, actually. I think she looks a little odd, but it's still nice. I like her. I do like her. So let's go out and let's see how she actually flies. There we go guys, that was the flight footage from the um, race. And what do I think to this? I think it's really good. It's it's one of their tiny hawks. It's brilliant, isn't it? Emacs do some lovely little quads. Batteries are cheap, the quads are cheap, they fly great. 
they do some nice kits, they do the whole kit if you want it, or you can just buy the actual little quad. And just something that size, you can chuck in your bag with a few spare batteries. You can buy a nice little jumper controller. This controller, by the way, guys, is also amazing. It is really, really nice. And actually flying the race with this, perfect. Absolutely loved it. So my recommendations for this is you go and buy one, stick it in your bag, go and have some fun. What more do you want? See you later.